Now, um, I want to share a brief tirade about something. <laughs> and you're like, oh, come on, it's Valentine's Day. All the more reason. Um, I, I know that, you know, this partly involves Sedona and it partly involves some things. Uh, last time I did a tirade, it was last month. And, um, and it was about some of the, the silly spiritual sayings and beliefs that we have that are absolutely not true. That was a good one. I, I liked having I had fun with that. There's a couple more things for me to pick on. I mean, for me to share. <laughs> um, one of them is, you know, a, a lot of us say we want change in our life. And I found that we just finished this co-creating a, a, a new life, consciously co-creating a new life with God. And it's very interesting to me because some of the people that most struggle and, and complain about their life being all shut down are not the ones who attended. So beware. I'm not going to point you out, even if you're around the world, I'm not going to point you out, but I just want you to be aware and ask yourself. You, you talk about wanting to change certain things, but... Did, did you take that relationships course because you said you wanted to change your relationships? You said you wanted better health. Did you ever get to that nature path? You know, what is it that we say one thing and we do another? So, so watch that. And also, it's just those odd things we do. Sedona is an interesting place to live. And this isn't exclusively for Sedona, but the whole new age community around the world. There's a lot of this odd, uh, for lack of a better word, hypocrisy. But I don't mean that in the... In the usual sense. I mean, we, we betray ourselves. We say we would like to change certain things, but we're, we're not always living that. So I just say, you know, do your best to, it's a new year, turn up, turn up the volume on your efforts, if you would call it that. Turn up the volume on your commitment. You know, Sedona is an interesting place because it's got beauty, energy, healing, and vortexes, and spirituality, but it also has competition, complacency, addiction, gossip, and all kinds of things to go right along with all that bliss and all that vortex. Wow, I'm going to go sit in the vortex so I can gossip and become more complacent. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. God, you know, anyway. And yet this is, this is the world's most significant spiritual town. Per capita, this is the, the light, in a sense. Per capita. So what are we doing you know, we better be careful because people say, Sedona magnifies, right? So if you're living the complacency, hypocrisy, gossip, and addictive behaviors of Sedona, what are you doing? You're actually feeding the darkness, the, the, the dark veil of the ego around the world, not just here, around the world, the one that feeds all war and suffering. I want to be part of the dispelling of that, you know? So, so... You know, yeah, we do, we do get into some silly things, and I shared that in another talk. And, and in light of today, Valentine's Day, people, you know, love, and, and it's great. New Agers, they'll go, you know, they'll go to hug each other. Oh, oh no, 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 the other side, because the hearts connect. Okay, now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. If I hug you like this, now wait, let's measure this. If I hug you like this, wait, wait for it. Okay, my heart's here and yours is over here. And I switch sides. It's only a couple of inches difference. If your heart is so small <laughs> that its energy can't reach, <laughs> I mean, you know. if you go, oh, I didn't, I didn't feel the love in that because I was off. You have bigger problems than hugging. Your heart is bigger than your entire aura. Your heart extends beyond what humans could even imagine. It's, it's a big energy. Now, does that mean I think there's a problem? No, no. If any of you give me a hug and you say, let's do the other side, I never stop and correct you and make fun of you. I just move to the other side because what, wherever people are, even though I do tirades and, and make jokes, I still love people more than correcting all the silliness. So I'm okay with it. But to help educate people to another level and say, really? You know, I don't mind doing that so that we can all understand. Don't be so... You know, <laughs> he said it, anal. <laughs> Don't be so anal about your spirituality. The, the love, the love, you know, just the hug, man, and, and the love. It doesn't have to be this and that side. And should your hands be clasped when you pray, or should it be like this, or should it be like this? You know, I have people that say, you know, oh, my, Michael, there's somebody over there. They're, they're, their feet are crossed. That blocks their energy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus didn't say, the kingdom of heaven is within you unless you cross your feet. Just lighten up. Just, just ease up and lighten up. It's all okay. Un unlace your shoelace because they're crossed. You know, their shoelaces. Just, it's all okay. And it's okay to, to believe those things. It's oh, That's okay too. I'm just planting the seed of go ahead and believe that, but also be willing inside to laugh a little and not, not take it all so seriously. We're not even here. We're not even here. So it doesn't matter if your favorite food is granola or SpaghettiOs. It doesn't matter. And I'm not going into a food talk. I'm just saying. I'm saying we're not even here. This is a hologram. We're living a dream of what it would be like to be apart from love. And that's why we get so weird about it and upset about it and we cause wars and we obsess. That's all, because we're trying to compensate. That's all. Let's learn, drop into the presence of God and then hug. And if you're guided to go to this side, let it be. If you're guided to this food, that food, let it be. But God first, just drop back into the love where everything is already okay. Everything is already okay. You know, when I had a child, I thought, a birth center, <coughs> new age music, you know, and all, you know, and the water birth. It was so cool. I prepped for the whole thing, <laughs> you know. But then all the plans, you know, you you get there, and then oh, I forgot the tape of the music, and then because we we went in for a visit, the doctor visit, and he said, you know, you're actually dilated, and you're about to have a baby. We're like, uh oh. So, um, you, you know, you you end up real having to do what what needs to be done rather than all the worrying about that it's done just right. So life is a strange thing, and we need to just kind of relax. And so I ended up with a different um, playlist that I, that I had available. So instead of, you know, all the Stephen Halpert music we had, like, uh, I had Stevie Wonders, Isn't She Lovely? <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. And, um, and uh, uh, some other Earth, Wind & Fire, some Chicago tunes and all these. Just some beautiful tunes that I picked. That's what was playing, you know. <laughs> Um, after getting to know my, my daughter a little, I should have probably played other songs, but <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know, it was an interesting thing, but one day she got married and, um, I, out of the blue, I went, wait a minute, I have it. I went and got the tape that I recorded of her being born. And you actually hear me playing the Stevie Wonder song, Isn't She Lovely, as she's actually born. And I mean, chills were like through my body because I hadn't heard it in 20 years, you know? So playing that, and it was just amazing, and then all her friends are crying, you know, and they thought they were all kind of just cool, you know, 20-something, you know, year olds or whatever, at their friend's wedding, but it brought, it brought depth, it brought emotion, it brought reality to, you know, to the experience. So, in closing the tirade, I want to say, you know, a lot of people, and, and this could apply wherever you live, it, it could be you have a little study group. The spiritual movement is supposed to be about God and awakening. It's not supposed to be, I'm a teacher for fame, not even for making money. It, you could make money, but is that why you're doing this? So we all have to kind of watch ourselves. If I had to do my life over, um, I even now I'm tempted at times, I truly am at times, to disappear and re, re, come out again with no, you know, an unknown a, a name. Come out and just call myself whatever, Billy Jack or something, and, <laughs> and teach, teach without being known, you know, because I think this is supposed to be about God. And even though I stand up here, and even though we have fun the way we do, and that's beautiful and it's deep, there's a part of me, if I did it again, I would try to find a way to do it without me, without having an image. Although I, I also have learned that people have said, you know what, you're a person and your interaction is what helps us connect. And so I have to keep that in mind. But there's a part of me that has thought it seriously and thought, how can I do that? You know, my first 10 years, I refused to have a photo on my flyers. First 10 years of my 35 years of teaching, it took a while for people to convince me. Put your photo on there. You know, and I'm like, it's not supposed to be about me. And they're going, you're being anal. So, <laughs> so I go, okay. And we started putting photos. And I realized, you know what? Whatever, whatever issues I might have around that, I have to push through them and work with people at this level. But there are times when I think, you know, we, it's supposed to be about God. So let's all remember that. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, people tend to like what I do, and I kind of like that. I like the, they like the style, or they like what I share, what I teach. But just remember, 
what I'm teaching is, is the same light of God that comes through me. It's not me. It's how it comes through me. Just like water poured through different things or, or shapes that you put cookie dough in in different shapes, it's just shaped through me. But, but really, if at the end of the day, someone doesn't understand that it's about awakening the Christ consciousness, then you haven't heard a thing I've said. I've never taught to be the guy who's known for the, the quantum physics, the Ayurvedic medicine, the TV person, the, you know, all the different angles. I've never really been into that. If somebody wants to know what he's, who, what's that Michael guy into? Isn't he the guy who, and most people can't describe it. You know, they say, well, didn't he write some books on sacred sexuality about relationships? So I stopped teaching those workshops. Because there's no label that I choose to live under. Because it's supposed to be about God. So I dance that dance. I'm not saying which parts are right or wrong for you. I'm just saying I dance that dance to do my best to say, back to God, guys. So even when I crack jokes and sound irreverent, there's reasons for that. I don't plan it. It just happens. But it took me years to be able to look back and say, there's actually a reason for that. And some of that's to get everybody to lighten up. Just when they might be listening going, you know, sitting and listening to a Michael talk, and then they lean forward going, wow, this guy's amazing. Say something irreverent to make them go, wow, what was that? To sh shake them up and disconnect the, the cords they might be putting in this direction. It helps us lighten up. You see, the laughter is actually healing. It actually shakes us and disperses tense energy. But one of the energies that it helps shake up and loosen up is that we take it all so seriously, including the guy who's up there talking and teaching. Back to the love. You know, and, and if ever you or anybody else, teachers out there, try to make bigger claims that it is about themselves, then they're trying to compete with God. Do that, and you'll come back with even less knowingness than you had this time. <coughs> those who say, you know, well, I'm amazing, I'm a, uh, whether it's Christian or shaman, those people that are out there and, and, and they're, you know, guilting people into this or, you know, that, or, or trying to profess their powers, go ahead. It's just that you'll never have them again because you made it about you. So part of the tirade is about careful. Don't take things so seriously and also careful not to compete with God. It's just not worth it. <laughs> In closing to that, St. Francis summarized it. Less of me and more of thee. That's it right there. You know, it take, took me 10 minutes to say it. It took him one line. <laughs> you know, just imagine living that mantra. Imagine all the spiritual teachers, and tell your teachers this. Mm -hmm. Tell them to recite less of me and more of thee, God. Get out of the way, master shaman. Get out of the way, you know, mystic master, this and that and the other, and TV personalities. And God, you know, get out of the way. Less of me, more of thee. Okay? <laughs>